Benjamin Cleary's debut feature Swan Song ended on an ambiguous note. The ending may be not confusing as other sci-fi classics like 2001. A space odyssey or inception, but it is quite a thought-provoking finale that left the audience in a mix of emotions of melancholy and cheer. Towards the end, we see that Cameron becomes paranoid about Jack's, his clone, involvement in his life. He doesn't like his mimicking of becoming him. Right there, I need that in my life. But as fate strikes, Cameron gets a massive seizure the day he is going to confront his family. The doctors hurriedly get him to the facility and give Jack the green light to live Cameron's life without getting Cameron's content on the matter. There is a condition applied, though. Cameron, we're gonna need you to come back. Jack has to stream all the live events via his contact lenses. If you're getting impatient to find out what happens, or if you got confused by the double Mahershala Valis at the end and the Swan Song ending, explained. Yeah. What happens in Swan Song? Cameron Turner, Ali, is a devoted husband and father with a second baby on the way, who has been diagnosed with a terminal illness. Luckily, Cameron lives sometime in the not-too-distant future, when smartphones have been replaced by computerized contact lenses, and cloning technology is all but flawless. Rather than spend his final days holding his family close, Cameron considers an agonizing option. Replace himself with a healthy, indistinguishable clone. His family will never know and will never experience the grief of losing him. But the real Cameron will die alone. Cameron travels to a remote facility to start the cloning process. Dr. Scott, Glenn Close, is the mastermind behind the project, Cameron will be her fourth client to date. While Dr. Scott insists this will work, Cameron is understandably skeptical. But, eventually, Cameron undergoes the process to have all of his thoughts and memories downloaded into his clone. They call the clone Jack to avoid confusion. Things are going okay until Jack has a video call with Cameron's wife, Poppy, Naomi Harris. Hello, Isabel. Cameron gets angry and decides to go home, which, according to his contract with Dr. Scott, he is allowed to do. Before Cameron gets through the front door of his home, he has some sort of seizure that is related to his terminal illness. Dr. Scott sends a car to pick Cameron up. Back at the facility, while Cameron is unconscious, Dr. Scott decides to send Jack in Cameron's place because Cameron's wife was expecting him home. Dr. Scott's assistant, Adam Beach, says that's not a good idea, he hasn't finished Jack's psyche evil yet. Dr. Scott does it anyhow. They will be able to monitor Jack via the video feed in his contact lenses. After two weeks, if it goes well, Dr. Scott will wipe Jack's memory of the cloning process and he will replace Cameron for good. No one will know that he's a copy, not even Jack. When Cameron gets his consciousness back, he is quite angry with the decision of the doctors. Though, he finds some assurance when he watches the live videos of Jack's interaction with his family. But, this soon falls apart as Jack removes his contact lenses more often and Cameron doesn't get much of the assurance about his family. This leads Cameron leads into paranoia. One day, he gets a nightmare about Jack, is getting angry with his son, Corey after he doesn't listen to him. So, he decides to take matters into his own hands by visiting his family. So, he sneaks out of the facility without informing the doctors. Eventually, he comes home. There he finds that everything is normal. I don't think she abandoned us. He sees Jack and Poppy sleeping together happily. Then he sneaks out of his workspace, finding his drawings there. At that moment, Jack wakes up and goes to the workspace, finding Cameron. At this moment, when we expect of having a confrontation between Jack and Cameron, Jack gently says, just do what you have to do. Then we see Cameron and Jack swap their clothes. Cameron goes to Corey and has a drink with him with Edamum. During that time, Cameron breaks down into tears, hugs Corey. Then he goes to Poppy and tells her how much he loves her. By hugging her, he understands how important he is to his family. At that moment, he accepts his fate and leads Jack to take his place. The scene cuts to the facility island where Cameron, now sitting and drawing the beauty of nature. Dr. Scott comes to him and announces that Jack now becomes officially Cameron Turner. <laughs> She also says that he leaves something for him. As Cameron goes to see that, he finds that Jack has sent a video telling Poppy that she loves him. As Poppy tells him that she loves him, 
the camera focuses on Cameron's face. Tears roll down his cheeks, don't know whether they are of the joy of having seen his responsibility on the right hand or melancholy of being left behind.